about. Some people are saying it don't mean anything. You don't do it. And you and I know this is not a prosperity church. You did not see us take up any other offerings after the one offering we're done. No one is bagging. No one is counting money. But we know that it is according to God's blessing, God's way to do things decently and in order. So we're looking at the book and we're going to teach on it. Because I want you to understand this. And when someone talks to you about it, you know and you can go straight to the scripture. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 to 10. If you can again put that phone on vibrate, check it one more time. I don't want to have you here too late tonight because I know the kids have school tomorrow. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 to 10. And then we'll go into the epistle of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. It'll be on the monitor as well. You can read it there. I'll be reading from the authorized version. And at times, because we want to make sure that everybody understands, I might put it, and I'll put it in the NLT, different versions to make sure that it's understandable. But if you have a Jehovah Witness Bible or a Mormon, please, I ask that you would throw that in the trash. That is not God's word. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, and I change, or I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob... For Israel are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. He says, return unto me and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? They're talking like they never left God or they never stopped doing what God said to do. But notice what God says in verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? He said, In tithes and offerings. Verse 9, Ye are cursed with a curse. That's a double curse. But you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, and I will rebuke, notice, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Remember, they were involved in agriculture. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Can we go to 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7? And the Bible says, Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give. Notice how. Not grudgingly. Or of necessity. For God love what? A cheerful giver. Again, every man according as he purpose in his heart. Whatsoever in your heart. When it comes to you giving an offering. So let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. I need something, so I'm going to give this to God so God can bless me back. No, don't do that. But God loveth a cheerful giver. We're still studying truth about tithing and offering. And again, this is part three. We had a subtitle, Scriptures on Giving and Being a Good Steward. Let's pray. Let's ask God to help us to receive this message in Jesus' name. Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you've done, doing, and going to do. Thank you for the opportunity to have the breath of Lord God life in our bodies right now. But somebody did not wake up this morning. That everything that you see that we've done today that was not God according to your will, your way, your word. I'm asking that God you have mercy on us. I'm asking that God your grace will be extended unto us. 
Father, I know that we went through this day, some tired, but some pressed our way in, God. But Lord God, we don't get any points for coming to the house of God. We do this because we're obeying your word. We give you praise because, God, that's what you said. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. You said you want worshipers, but to worship you in spirit and in truth. It's about giving what you want, God. I pray that you bless us and help us tonight to understand. I bind every spirit of distraction, everything that comes to put doubt in the ears of your people, everything that is not of you, every wrong spirit, whether it's in this building right now or waiting on the outside, oh God. I forbid it to operate. I cast it down lord god in the name of jesus god we take absolute authority oh god and we claim this is your house that has your name on it oh god and we give you the glory and honor teach us tonight awake us tonight thank you for watching over our children i ask that you keep your hand upon the saints that are not with us lord god keep look god my sister sedoni lord god bless her to make it on back sister paula bless her to make it on back bless them to be in the house of god god to know that we have to keep you first I give you glory. I give you honor for everything that you've done, oh God. Continue to bless us. Continue to help us. And at the end of the day, we're asking that you save us, oh God. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, can you clap your hands because you love Jesus? Can you clap your hands because you respect Jesus? Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Truth about tithing and offering and we've been learning this particular subject it is something that we must learn and must understand because we live in a world that has made church or the gospel a franchise and there are many churches and many pastors that are over those churches or whatever they want to call themselves whatever spiritual leader they have taken the gospel, they have taken God's word, and they have now made money from it and built their kingdoms. And so that is not what God wanted. Again, when we talk about tithing and offering, understand, people of God, we live uh, in a different century. And so, yes, we do have farmers today. But if you would understand, when God was dealing with Israel in the Old Testament, uh, they made their currency, rather, or their money uh, was the harvest of the ground. Their money was flocks. Their money uh, was certain clothes or raiment, gold. It was silver. These were those things that they used for their currency. Today, yes, we do have gold. Today, there is silver. But what God has given us, it is what is called money. That is what we use to be able to live. That is what we use to be able to bless others. That is what we use to maybe, if you don't want to bless others with money, then you will purchase certain things like food for them or clothing. That is what you go to work for. Watch, if somebody after you finished working gave you a cattle, told you, would you be upset? I know you would. Somebody walked up to you and say, I got a bunch of doves in the back. <laughs> After you get working, here is your doves. You will be upset. Amen. And so when somebody said, well, we don't, you know, that's all the Old Testament. They don't know what they're talking about and they're lying. They're not being honest. And so this is what God wants us to know about this subject. This is what God wants us to learn so we can have a full understanding of it. Yes, just because false churches, false preachers, false prophets have taken this subject, taken this particular uh, part in the Bible, use it for their gain, does not mean that the church of the living God should just allow them to dictate it. No, we have to teach the truth about it. We have to let it be known what is it all about and what did God say about it. And that will be a blessing for us. So the Bible is letting us know. and We talked about it last time. God wants his people to be prosperous physically and spiritually. He does. Doesn't mean when you're prosperous that you are filthy rich. That's not what that means. But prosperous, which means that you are a blessing. Prosperous, meaning that you have good health. 
prosperous, which means that everything you put your hands to, it can be a blessing, not only for you, but it's for others. He wants us to be prosperous. God wants his church to be prosperous. This is why when he planted this church, God knew what he was doing. Because in the city of Belle Glade, we know how, th how things were before we ever got here. And we're not saying that it's going to change overnight, but God is blessing. God is helping. People are coming into the knowledge of truth and realizing that how God wants to live. It doesn't mean that everybody will accept the word of God. It doesn't mean that they will accept what God says to do. But as long as God is going word, going forth, it will not return void. It's going to save people. People's lives are going to change. And so for those that do not want to accept God's adulterated word, the true word of God, then they will have their part in the lake of fire. But it doesn't change. They didn't like Jesus when he was on the scene. They killed all of the prophets and the apostles. So you already know nothing has changed. That spirit of the Antichrist is still here. It wants our children. It wants our families. It wants to take our fathers out of the home. It wants to put man with man, woman with woman. It wants our mothers to raise children by themselves. But God has brought his word here that we can understand what he wants in this last hour. I am grateful for the true word of God. It is the power, the gospel unto salvation that's what saved me that's what changed my life I'm not saying that I came out of heaven I'm not saying I didn't have a past I'm not saying that everything is on me and I got a halo on my head but the word of God has changed and that's what it should do it should change you you can't say that I know the word of God I was born in church God know my heart and there is not a change don't nobody believe that they were looking for somebody that has a change in their life and so this is why we have to bring all the word of God, not just some of it, not just preach out of certain books, but preach out of the whole book. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So God wants us to be prosperous spiritually and physically. This is what John said in 3 John chapter 2 verse 1, chapter 1 verse 2. Notice he said, beloved, talking to the church, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Notice, prosper and be in health, even notice as thy soul prosper. That is a physical and that is spiritual as well. But the key thing as we've been talking, that if you and I want to be blessed, you and I have to stay within the guidelines of the blessing. You can't say you want God to bless you, but then you live over here. You can't say you want God to bless you, hear me, but you do things like the world does. I can't say I want God to protect me, but I want to walk around and be involved in gang life and shooting and killing, murdering and robbing. How? I can't say God to bless me and protect me. The life that I'm living is not going to happen. Does that make sense? And so if you want to be blessed, you and I got to stay within the guidelines of the blessing. You don't get the blessing when you're outside of God's will, when you're outside of of the blessing if we open up ourselves to the things of this world if I open up myself to demonic attacks do I open up myself or expose things unto my family if I allow my children to be exposed if I allow my wife to be exposed if I allow myself to be exposed to the things of this world demonic spirits that are out there whatever it's out there if you open yourself up to it the devil says there's a door I'm coming in and so if I stay with in the guidelines shut the door over here shut the back door shut the windows shut this right here that I'm protecting myself the way God wants us to be protected from anything that will hurt or harm or danger but when you and I start to start opening up doors or we get outside of God's guidelines if we start doing things outside of his will then we have just opened ourselves up to whatever danger is coming to us somebody needs to catch this tonight that if you want to stay blessed want to stay protected want to be blessed physically and spiritually you need to stay within the guidelines of those blessings can you look at somebody next to you and say if they're not in the guideline get back in the guideline of the blessing you got to stay within the guidelines stop walking around here talking about I got angels all around me you're outside of God's will. 
I can know God's word, be raised in the church. I can sit there and have received the Holy Ghost and been baptized in Jesus' name. But let this preacher, let this boy get off into something that is not right. Then God's going to say, you've gotten outside of my will and whatever's coming your way, you going to take it. If not, what you and I are teaching others and ourselves is that you and I can tempt God. Don't tempt God. Don't tempt God thinking you can do and go and do whatever you want to do. Watch this and you'll be protected. If you get out of the guidelines, imagine if I go to the casino, I come back and I say, they robbed me. Now, what are you going to say to me? I said, what was you at the casino for? Huh? If I say to you, well, I, I want people to be saved. I want everybody to be saved. But I go to the dope house. I go to the dope house. The preacher goes to the dope house. And I'm caught up in there, in the dope house, and they raid. And y'all see me with the mug shot. What you gonna say to me? I said, why were you in a dope house? Why were you in a dope house? Huh? Why were you in a place like that? So if I do something outside of God's guidelines or his way, his order, then watch this, I can't be protected. I can't be blessed. So if you understand that, that principle can also be in our finances as well. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And so God is trying to talk to us. We're talking about this tithing and offering or giving. And understand is teaching the children of God uh, about being a good steward as well. God wants us to be a good steward. And again, we talked about this subject. It must be taught. So that the child of God is not easily led to believe the lies that are out there about giving regarding tithing and offering. But it must be taught according to what is written. It has to be rightly divided. People can read scripture and say that they know scripture, but the scriptures have to be rightly divided. I can throw off scriptures all day to make you believe whatever I'm saying. Because if I have an agenda, I'm only going to go to certain scriptures. I'm only going to know certain parts of the Bible. But if you actually are trying to teach someone what the Bible is saying, it'll all line up together and scripture will interpret scripture. You won't have a confusion with scripture. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And so God wants us to know the problem we face today is that people don't teach this subject or they'll teach it for their gain or their control. They'll add and they'll take away for their what fits them and their agenda and you will see them building their empires. You'll see that them building their big old houses. And you'll see them riding around in their Rolls Royces. You'll see them having all of these things and flossing. They hear what I'm saying. Uh, I don't need no bishop's ring. I don't need no bishop's necklace uh, cross on my neck, tucked in my jacket. I'm not coming out here in no bishop's robe. All of that get up. Does that make sense? All of that stuff don't mean anything. People take on that stuff as they, if they're somebody. And making the people feel like they are somebody. That the preacher, if he doesn't follow what is written, then hell is his portion as well. And so God is teaching us. House of God, we got to understand, what is this thing about tithing and offering? God, what do you, and how do you want the New Testament church Yes, we are part of the New Testament church. Yes, I still believe in the laws of the Old Testament. But there are things that God, our Lord and Savior, fulfilled. But in the New Testament church, God, what are we to follow? How we are to do this? What should we know about this? And in our last session, we made it clear. Notice that everything we have, saying of God, it belongs to who? To God. There is not one thing that you can say it's mine. As we talked about it, because if it was yours, as we said, that when you leave this earth, you can take it with you. When you say that's mine, okay, that means you can take it with you.
But you and I know that nothing we have, we can take it with us. You didn't come into the earth with it, and you ain't leaving with it. Does that make sense? Everything you have now will stay here. Everything we have, everything we own, every pension, everything in your account, whatever it is, in your house, in front of your house, whatever you didn't purchase, whatever you didn't bought, whatever you didn't got, it belongs here. And whatever is here, God says, that's mine. Whatever we have, it belongs to God. Now, when I realize that, I don't have a problem when God says, I want this. When you realize that, watch this, you were created by a creator. You and I will not argue with the creator when he tells us to be here or to do this and to do that. But the problem is we don't understand that he's the creator. We think we got it. We think who we are is the creator. Which is why we say, my life, my money, my house, my car, I can do what I want. Because you thinking that you're the creator and you are not. But once we realize that we do not belong to ourselves, that watch this, we belong to somebody else. Somebody created us. When he tells us to do something, when you realize that and you understand that, you will never argue with the creator. You will do what he says to do. But I realize that people don't realize that, which is why you and I can day today say no. Why were you not in church? Because I had other things. Something came up. I'm grown. <laughs> I pay my own bills. Only way you're able to pay your own bills because he gives you the health and the strength to do that. But if you don't realize that you have a creator, a maker, then you'll walk around like, you know, you got it. Nobody can tell you nothing. But once you realize and you humble yourself to be able to say, listen, the only way I'm breathing right now, he's allowing my chest to go in and out. He's allowing that heart to beat. And the moment that he wants to take it, moment that he doesn't want me to breathe again, he can snatch that breath from me. Does that make sense? All he has to do is just hold one of my arteries real quick, and I could not take another breath. Once you realize that, you will never tell God. See, what you got to get the revelation. Once you realize that, you will never argue. You will never go against his will. You will be what he tells you to be. You will do what he tells you to do. This don't take you to have science to degree. Once you realize that, watch, you don't belong to yourself, you will begin to say, yes, Lord. He becomes your master. Yes, Lord. And so the Psalm is 24, 1, we say it again. The earth is the Lord's and the what? The fullness thereof. Notice the world, the cosmos, and they that dwell therein. You live here, you belong to God. Even in the laws, Deuteronomy, the repetition of the laws, Deuteronomy 10, verse 14 said, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of watch, heavens, the heaven and the heaven and the heavens, plural. So whatever's out there that you ain't never seen, God said, that mine too. <laughs> you get out there, you want to be an astronaut, okay, get out there, that's mine too. He says, is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that therein is even the prophet Haggai Haggai told us like this this is how God feels about everything look at what he says in Haggai chapter 2 verses 8 notice whatever's in these banks you know what's in the banks he said the silver is mine and the gold is mine said the Lord of hosts everything I don't care what you think you have everything belongs to God it all so when I get to understand that, then I won't have a problem. I won't have a problem with God. And we talked about the principle. Where is the principle? I got to say it again. Where does the principle of tithing comes from? The tithing part I'm speaking of right now, I'm going to get to the offering. The tithing part, the principle, where does it come from? Again, we said it before. It goes back, hear me, in the beginning. I have to say it again because some of us probably didn't hear this part. But it goes back to the book of Genesis. And in the book of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, 
the Lord God who made Adam or mankind, he told them that this particular tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, don't eat from that. He gave them an opportunity to say, you can have all the rest of that, but this tree, don't eat from that. Now, they had a choice. He didn't force them. He didn't put a fence around it. Hear me. He didn't try to keep them away from it at that time. He literally gave them a command or an instruction. That's what God does to us today. He gives us a command and an instruction that this right here, I don't want you to eat from this tree. It is the knowledge of good and evil. The other tree that was in the garden was the tree of life. That was in the garden as well. But this one specifically, he said, don't eat from this tree. That was a command. I'm not going to put no angels right here, right now. I'm just going to give you a command and an instruction. That when God says it, watch this. Adam knew that, watch, God was his father. Adam knew that God created him. Eve knew that, watch this, she came from Adam, which also who came from God. And so when God said something, you and I, hear me, as human beings must follow that. But God said, don't do that. So the principle of tithing, tithing, that tenth, when we get there, I'm talking about it more. But right now, the principle or the precept upon precept, that very thing God is teaching us that when I say that belongs to me, you and I are not to touch that. You and I are not to dabble in that. You and I are not to take pleasure or desire in that. It belongs to God. And the moment that they ate from that thing that God said not to eat from, the Bible says that they were cursed. What was the curse? It was death. No, they did not die. Watch this immediately. But spiritually, they died. Adam died about 969 years old. And so he died. Now, are we living that long now? No, they are dying and so when you and I do something what God says not to do hear me child of God you're going to be cursed you're going to die you're going to be in trouble so I've learned whatever belongs to him whatever he tells me I can have and I cannot have I'm just going to follow that instruction but when you and I begin to say listen God gonna have to understand God gonna have to understand God gonna have to understand God going to have to just, he going to have to help me on this one. I ain't there yet. I ain't there yet. Could you imagine being in the garden saying, God, I ain't there yet. Click E. Could you imagine you doing that? God, I ain't there yet. What you mean? I ain't all the way there following what you to say. So you going to have to help me, but I'm going to take this one today. Could you imagine doing that in the garden? You be dead. Does that make sense? You will be dead. And I'm speaking the way he did it in the Old Testament. You will be dead. And so I'm learning in the New Testament, in the church of the living God, that if he says not to do something, don't do it. If he says not to do this, don't do it. If he tells the married man, do not mess with somebody that's not your wife, I've learned don't do that. If he says not to fornicate, I've learned don't do that. If he tells me not to drink, not to alcohol, not to smoke, not to open up myself to drugs, to the things that will alter my mind because my mind is with the mind that I serve Christ. If he tells me don't go to these things that are unclean, if he tells me to separate myself, if he tells me to do these things, if he tells me to be in the house of God, if he tells me to let go of the things that are in the world, then I'm learning, watch this from the scripture of the Old Testament, that I need to just do what he says to do. Why? Because I don't want to be cursed. And if you want to know why the family is crazy and why this is going on, why your son cursing, calling young ladies HOEs and out of their name, why you want to know why this is happening, you better keep your children in the house of God and sit them on the front row if you got to so that they their minds are not nowhere else. You got to get your family to the house of God. You got to wake, wake that young man up right there. Wake him up in Jesus' name because I'm going to put you on notice so you won't say you didn't hear it. Somebody got to get the understanding. Whatever God says, that's what we ought to do. Whatever God says, that's how you got to walk. Whatever God says, that's how you got to love and forgive. Whatever God says, tell your neighbor, stop turning your nose up when God says to do something. God is telling us this. Ain't no man telling you this. The man is the messenger, the mouthpiece. But God is talking to you right now. And so God is trying to talk to us. And literally all he's doing is saying to us, 
follow my commands, my instructions. Now, who do you have the problem with? Me? Me? Please. I move out of the way. It ain't me. We just read the scripture, what belongs to him. And if you're on this earth, watch this, you belong to him. In what way? Because he created you. I'm not calling everybody a child of God. Because everybody don't belong to God. Is a child of God. Or belong to him like that. But he did create you. So if he created you, he still has control over you. And if you say, uh-uh, then can you fight him or prevent him from putting you in hell? And if you can't, we just met a new God. Who are you? Thor? Who are you? Which X-Men are you? Huh? Huh? Who are you? There's only one God. And Jesus is God. Can we say amen to that in Jesus' name? So if we don't give what God wants, then we'll be like Cain. We remember what Cain did. Cain tried to give God what he wanted. And so if you learn from the scripture, the principles of the scripture of the Old Testament, you will understand, do not try to give God what you think you should give him. Do not try to give God what you think you should give him. Give him what he wants. I've learned, brother, you and I can't give God what I want to give him. I can't tell him, brother Juan, brother Juan, I can't tell God I'm not coming to church. I got stuff to do. I got a business. I got things to take care of. How dare you tell him what you're going to do? But if you want to do it now, rock on. At some point, <laughs> you're going to meet him. At some point, you're going to stand before him. And he's going to be a different God that you, <laughs> that you know about. The meek God, the little mild, the little merciful one. You know, the one that forgives, everybody say he forgives everybody. It won't be that one. This is the one with the flames in his eye. This is the one that the mountain said, we trying to hide. A mountain? How's the mountain sitting there saying, we trying to hide? Huh? This is, everything is fleeing. The ground is going to flee. As the scripture said. So one day you're going to face him. I don't want to face him like that. I don't want to face an angry God. I, I must hear well done. Does that make sense? Anybody want to hear that? Well done. I, if you want to hear that, just, just clap your hands and say, Lord, I got to hear well done. I, I got to hear well done. I, I don't belong to hell. Uh, hell wasn't made for me. It was made for the devil and his angels. I got to hear well done. And so I'm going to go through this and we're almost going to be done. The other part we want to learn about this, we must understand that tithing and giving and offering, hear me, because people try to say, y'all be doing that tithing and offering stuff at y'all church. You know that was under the law. You know we don't do that under the law. No. We, that's under the law. We don't do that no more. No, no. They don't know what they're talking about. Tithing, hear me, tithing and offering, watch this, was before the law. It did not establish under the law. So when somebody sit there and tell you, y'all be paying a tithe, y'all be paying an offering. Yes, I pay tithe, I pay offering. That church trying to get over on you. No, no, not here. We don't do that here. We don't do that here at all. Huh? We don't do that here. I'm telling you, it is in the scripture and it's before the law. It was taught to us from the principle from the, from the Garden of Eden. And then we see in the scripture the patriarchs, the, what we would say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those three names, the patriarchs. We will see that they, hear me, that they gave tithing and offering. And all of them were before Moses. All of them were before the law. Hear me. The law set up a systematic way. It gave us a systematic way to do it. But as far as paying a tithe and offering, it was before the law. And so you have to understand that. So don't let anybody tell you uh, that was under the law. 
that was under the law. That was under the law. No, it started before the law, but it was systematic under the law. Does that make sense? Notice I want us to go to the scripture, and you can see, look at it. Abraham paid tithes. Genesis 14, verse 18. We want to make it simple so that you can see. There was a man or king by the name of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, who had no father, had no beginning. He was a theophany. He was, watch this, something that we can see in the beginning that was manifested. Something in the beginning, a king, a person who has no father, has no beginning. He didn't have an ending. Just shows up in the scripture. Abraham paid Melchizedek, the king, the high priest, offering a tithe. Here are the scriptures. Melchizedek, king of Salem, and a priest of God, most high, brought Abraham some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abram with the blessings. Blessed be Abram, God most high, creator of heaven, and earth and blessed be God most high who was defeated who, ha who has defeated your enemies for you notice here Abram gave Melchizedek ten of all the goods he had recovered I'm seeing in the scripture and if you know from the scripture that Abraham he paid tithes and this was about 430 years before the law 430 years before the law ever came about, Abraham was paying time. So don't tell me that it was under the law. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Go to another, a son, Jacob. Can't get through it tonight a lot. Jacob paid tithes. Look at Genesis 28, verse 20 and 22. 20 to 22. The Bible says, then Jacob, notice, made this vow. If God will indeed be with me and protect me this journey, and if he, watch, will provide me with food and clothing, Lord, just give me the necessity. Give me that which I need, not all that I want, but just give me what I need. And if I return safely to my father's home, then notice that the Lord will certainly be my God. This memorial pillar I have set up will become a place of worshiping God. I will present to God. You ain't presenting it to the preacher. I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. Because everything belongs to him. I'll give a tenth to him. What he gives to me. I'm just going to give back to him. It ain't like God needed. Like God ain't sitting there like, you ain't going to give me none. You out? Like he ain't got all resources. Like his, it don't ever run out. He not looking. He don't want nothing from you. This whole thing is about, watch this. That which is important to you, will you give it up? Will you trust God with it? That thing that you love so much, which is why, hear me, people of God, which is why God can trust you when the very thing that you love, when he asks for it, you give it up. When he asks for it, watch this, his son, Isaac, Abraham. What did Abraham do with Isaac? When God says that promise that I gave you, that thing that you wanted, that you and Sarah was looking for, I'm coming back to you right now. I gave it to you. I opened up a wound. But now I'm coming back to you to tell you, give me back him and sacrifice him unto me. Abraham, watch this. He took his son, watch this, Isaac. Isaac said, I see the wood. Daddy, I see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? Abraham said, God will provide and he was taken up there he put him watch this up on the altar and he laid him up there took out the knife and Abraham was about to kill his son and the angel of the Lord said Abraham Abraham he stopped 
them because Abraham's mindset, listen, uh, whatever God gives me, it belongs to him. Uh, when he wants it, I got to give it back to him. Uh, and now watch this. Let me bring it home. Uh, if God created you, uh, saint of God, you belong to him. Uh, you got to present your body as a living sacrifice. Uh, don't you allow this drugs. Uh, don't you allow these things of this world uh, to consume you. Uh, your body, my body belongs to him. Uh, give yourself back to him. He says, I want to use you. I want to use you. I want to use you. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you. And when he says, I want to use you, you got to say, here I am, God. Whatever you want to do, I'm your sacrifice. This is what this thing is about. Giving yourself all this foolishness. I, I raise my hand, accept the Lord as my personal savior. I receive in my heart. He ain't your master. He ain't your Lord. Because when he presents to you what he wants, you and I be like this. Ha, I ain't there. He don't have to work with me on that one. God know my heart, though. He do. He know my heart, though. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. In the same breath, we sitting there talking about, hey, pray for me. Say a prayer for me. Bless me, Lord. Bless me indeed. Open up the windows, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you got another smoke? You got another cigarette? Hey, you, 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 you go, so you go to church after the prayer? You want to go to church? I ain't going to be to go tonight, though. But you're working on it. If you don't stop this foolishness. Stop this foolishness, man. This is straight foolishness. We don't play church here. Stop this foolishness. That if you really want to be saved, God is planning a church where you can come in, even if it rubs you the wrong way, you can still sit there and say, hey, they be preaching truth, though. That's truth right there, though. It hurt. It don't feel good, but that's right. That if I'm going to be saved, I know where I'm going. If you want to be right, then you got a place you can come to get yourself right before God. Can we clap our hands up to that in Jesus' name? So I understand as we go home. Look at God's words under the law to Moses. Come on, sis. Concerning the time. Go to Leviticus. Leviticus 27, verse 30. We're going home. Kids got to go to sleep. Make it simple. The Bible says it's on a monitor. All the tithe of the land. Where the other sea. Go, go, go back there. There we are. Leviticus 27, pull it up, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is the Lord's. Yahweh, Yehovah. It is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Now you see a lot of the things talking about harvest and agriculture again, I got to say it, because that's how they were able to be paid or blessed. They weren't looking at dollar bills, 20s. They weren't looking at 50s. They weren't looking. They didn't have what we have today. You hear me? They didn't have that stuff. They had agriculture, fruits, vegetables. They had certain seeds and wheat. They had like animals and flocks. That was what was given to them. Also real estate or what we call land. That's what they thought they had. So they were rich that way. But watch this. Don't get me wrong. If you, if somebody gave you some land, take it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Somebody gave you all some land, take it. All right. But notice a scripture. He says the fruits and the trees belong to the Lord and must be, watch this, holy. Make it simple. Put it in an NLT. I'll make it simple for you. Fields or the fruits from the trees belong to the Lord and must be what? Set apart. That's what holy is. Set apart to him as holy. Set that apart for God. God, that's yours. That even when they had their cattle or their sheep, this is what they would do. Hear me. They would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when the cattle would come through, they would count one, two, three, four. On the tenth one, when belong to God. 
What that means is this, that the cattle was so precious to them that if a cattle came through, watch this, and it was something that was like, ooh, that's a good cow. Ooh, that was a, ooh, that's a, ooh, that's a big, large one. Ooh, our family can do something with that one. They could not go like this. I'm going to hold this one. Ten, you take that card. They had to literally go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and on the tenth one, no matter, watch this, how good it was, it belongs to God. Which is the same thing. <laughs> what God is trying to get us in our mind. No matter what it might be. Whatever the circumstance is. However it might benefit you. Hear me. <laughs> however it might be. Don't rob him for what is his. Give it to him. You might say this is very inconvenient for me. I, I don't care. It belongs to him. Give it to him. So he says to this. Watch this. Verse 31. If you want to buy back the Lord's tenth of the grain. Now God says, now don't say the preacher said this. Read it. Don't look at me, read it. I'm just going to read it with you. Because you'll leave out here and say, do you hear what that man said? Don't do that. If you want to buy back the Lord's tenth, which means, God, I'm going to have to keep yours you're, you're tithing because I got to pay my bills. Okay. See, you, God is, he's he, he cool. I like God. This is what God says. Okay, no problem. If you want to buy back the Lord's tenth of the grain or the fruit, you must pay its value plus. See, we were at 10. We was at 10. But if you want to use that, which belongs to him, he said, no problem. You got to add 20% on that. People have a problem with that. But, but we go buy cars. We go to the bank. I told you, I used to go to the cash, the, the, the check cashing place. I see how they charge me. And so when people sit there and say, what? Yes, if you take a tenth, you're tied from God. It's no problem. But now you owe 20%. Now, what, what is that going to do to us? Put us in a hole. So I just learned, you know what? <laughs> That's you. That's you. Fred, I need to pay uh, my light bill, but I ain't want to rob God. Can you help me out this time? Because I'd rather borrow from him instead of taking from God. Because how many know thieves and robbers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Thieves ain't going to heaven. So I ain't about to rob God. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I want to be blessed. Does anybody want to be blessed? Let's stand on our feet tonight and let's say, Lord, I want to be blessed. Come on, let's say, I want to be blessed. So we thank God for the word of the Lord. We're going to finish in these series so we can learn. I want God to continue to teach us. So that way when someone approach you or the enemy tries to approach us in a different way. I don't care about anybody claiming that they know Bible, they know this, they know that. Or they're part of the 12th tribe, whatever they want to be. I don't care about none of that. I care about my soul being saved according to what is written. According to what Jesus said and what he gave to the apostles. I thank God for the prophets, the Old Testament. I understand he said I must be born again. People that try to claim that Paul was not a real Hebrew, I don't know what's wrong with them. He's more of a Hebrew than anyone today lives. Had great knowledge and revelation of the scriptures. Met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Gave the message to the Gentile church. This is how we got it today. There is only one doctrine. The Bible does not say anything about a Baptist doctrine, Catholic doctrine, Mormon, Jehovah Witness, Church of God in Christ. Don't say nothing about Episcopal, Lutheran, Anglican. Don't say nothing about Presbyterian. Don't say nothing about these other doctrines. The only doctrine that the book teaches us in the New Testament church is the Apostles' Doctrine. And if you will give yourself from the principle of this message, God is saying if we've done something wrong, 
If we will confess our sins, forsake what we have done, turn away from that sin, that wrong, repent. He already know what we've done. If we've robbed him, repent. Don't rob him again. Don't give yourself to the devil. Don't let the devil talk to your mind. Don't let the devil cause your soul to be lost. Don't let the devil talk you off the ledge. He know he has no hope. And he's trying to take everybody with him. But he's not getting me. Child of God, make up your mind. He's not getting me. Tell it to yourself. He's not getting me. If you're here today, you can come to this altar. Maybe you want to come and talk to God. Maybe you want God to help you to stay faithful. You've been faithful, but you want him to help you to stay faithful. Maybe you need God to help you or bless your family. Why don't you stand in the gap for them? Maybe you say, you know what? I need to be saved, preacher. And just like everybody, you don't have to feel embarrassed. We all had to come to this water right here. Churches today don't even have a baptism. But there is one right here. And you can come and go down in Jesus' name. The preacher will say, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're truly going to give yourself to him today. Come on, brother. Don't say, sisters, don't say, you know, I'll try next time. Don't even say, I don't want to play with God, so I ain't going to do it right now. You don't even know if you'll be here tomorrow. Just ask God, God, I don't know how to do this. But I know that you're telling me to come and get my soul right, because I don't know if I'll see tomorrow. I got friends, I got family that are not here today, that wish they could be here. But they was gone too soon. Will you give yourself today? Baptism takes three minutes of your time. Three minutes. Can you tell God? I didn't have three minutes on a Wednesday night to give to you. Don't believe that you got to go through a class first. The day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Come on. Be a good steward with your life. Be a good steward. You have the ability to choose. It's your will. But every person that chooses, there's a consequence that comes behind that. If you're here today, come on. We're going to lift up our hands and we're going to repent. We're going to ask God to forgive us. That's what he wants. He wants everybody to repent. You just have to open up your mouth and say, Lord, forgive me. I've messed up. I've done some wrong, and I know you already know. But I'm asking that you please save me. The preacher, he's only telling me what you want me to hear is to, for me to turn away from my wicked ways. Come on, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our hands. And for those that have come to the altar, we're going to lay our hands upon them right now. Everybody just lay your hand. The preachers in here, the elders, ministers, lay your hand upon them now. Father, we ask that your will be done in our life. We ask that you will touch our hearts. We ask that you forgive us. I'm asking that you apply the blood to the sign of God again. I'm asking that you forgive her. I'm asking that you forgive him. I'm asking that you forgive me. I'm asking that you forgive Lord God Belgley. I'm asking that you forgive Pahokee Canal Point. I'm asking that you forgive Lord Harlem. I'm asking that you forgive Lord God LaBelle Canal Point. I'm asking that that you forgive Harlem. I'm asking that you forgive Lord Morehaven. I'm asking that you forgive Clewiston, God. Forgive us for what we've done, God, in the Glade area. Forgive us for how we treated you. Forgive us how we have given our bodies over to other things, other unclean things. Forgive us, God, for what we have done, God. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, God, for murdering others with our words. Forgive us for being disobedient. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for every unclean thought, every unclean word, every unclean, God, life that we done in lifestyle oh god you know all things i'm asking please forgive us wash us god cleanse us with your word god but lord touch the heart of that young man that young brother that young sister that mother god that elder god to turn away from his ways to not treat his wife like that to not treat her husband like that to love their kids oh god to pray god in the name of jesus so don't turn away and walk away and get mad at god don't get mad at the church the church didn't do anything to you people are the one that hurt people but God doesn't hurt you God's church is not hurting you it's trying to help you God I'm asking that you
you bless us. Save us tonight, God. We heard your word. Those that are watching live, surrender unto him in the name of Jesus. We love you, God. Can you open up your mouth right now and just can you say thank you, Jesus? Come on, can you say thank you, Jesus? Come on, can you say hallelujah? Come on, just say hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless me, Lord. Bless me indeed. Bless me, Lord God. Forgive me, God. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus. Go with our children. Bless their minds, oh God. Cover them, God. Bless their families, Lord God. The enemy is going to attack them, God, but I'm asking, put your angels and camp around them, God. Cover them on the bus. Cover them in the class. Cover the mother and father in their schools, God. Cover them on their jobs in the name of Jesus. We need you, God. We need you, and we love you, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, can you clap your hands up to God? God bless your saints. Make it home safely. Children, let God be with you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on. If you need to be baptized, you can be baptized. You can go to the education wing. Go ahead and make your way. You can get some delicious fruit before you go home. In Jesus' name. May the Lord be with you. Until we meet again, we'll be in the house. Invite somebody for Sunday. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn it up unto God. We're going to lift it up unto God. We're going to get excited because of God and what he's doing. Let's not drop the ball. Let's invite somebody to the house of God. Think about it right now, who you're going to bring. God bless you in Jesus' name.